it's our time. We must rise up and no longer disparage. It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we should hear, well done, faithful servant. Yeah, church, it's our time. It's our time to confess the ways we're mangled, the sins and selfishness that have us entangled. Lust, greed, and pride, their path leads to the grave. Yet we return to our sins as if we're a slave. Can we survive in this putrid dead sea? I quote Paul, may it never be. So let's cast aside our individual leprosy and begin to leave a biblical legacy. There's a glorious prize awaiting to be won, and the way to win is to start to run. Let's lace them up and fight the good fight, become to the world both salt and light. Our life on earth is merely a vapor. Our chapter must move from pen to paper. So church, let's get to writing because it's our time. It's our time, church. We have what it takes to help the world from its slumber awake. To Jesus, we are his beautiful bride. Whom shall we fear with him on our side? We have each other. We are not alone. It's iron to iron in the combat zone. There's a promise of life full of adventure. As long as we give both talents and treasure, the workers are few, the harvest is plenty, with so many lives running on empty. Scores of people trying to cope, they've come to the end of their proverbial rope. Young eyes are wandering, looking for direction. Make sure we point them to his resurrection. The clock's ticking, we're on our dime. Hey church, rise up! It's our time. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all of the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. This is the day that the Lord has made, hallelujah, and we rejoice. And wasn't those videos awesome, amen? They were awesome because they put the framework together for today's message. I told you, I thought you would like them, amen? Now, today we're gonna to talk about, as I stated earlier, keeping it fresh through the grace of renewal, amen? Keeping it fresh through the grace of renewal is what we're gonna talk about today, amen? Now, beloved, it's important that you and I understand that in order to maintain the let it be new mindset and lifestyle that we've been encouraging and exhorting you on throughout this whole entire month, throughout this entire month, we want you to know that if you're going to let go of what was, if you're going to let go of what happened and then step into no, into what is, it's important that you keep on stepping, amen? That you don't revert back, that you don't go back, that you don't go back and pick up what was, that you don't go back and pick up what happened or keep replaying that in your mind, but you just let it go, amen? And you move forward. And now in order to do this, God pressed upon my spirit to share this with you, amen. The spirit of God pressed upon my spirit to share this message with you today about keeping it fresh. And he told me to tell you today that you must receive 
and appropriate the grace of renewal from him, hallelujah, as a gift that God has graced you with the grace of renewal, has gifted you with the grace of renewal, and he wants you to appropriate it in your life today. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, when we talk about the grace of renewal, I want you to think with me now about the renewable energy of the Holy Spirit, the renewable power of the Holy Spirit, the unlimited, hallelujah, resource, hallelujah, and source of power of the Holy Spirit in your life, that the Holy Spirit is the person of God, the third person of God, of the Trinity, amen. He lives within every believer and he's there to constantly renew your energy, renew your power, renew your focus, hallelujah, to keep you and I in line. And watch this, the Bible says, keep in step with the Spirit, amen, because we have derived our lives from the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about your physical, natural, born life. I'm talking about that supernatural, amen, hallelujah, born from above life, that regenerated life that God has given you, that Zoe life that God has given you. Well, the Bible teaches us that since we have derived our life from the Spirit, then we have to keep in step with the Spirit. That means the Spirit, hallelujah, is marching and leading and guiding you, and you got to stay in step with Him, amen? Not in your own strength, but not in your own power, hallelujah, as he, as it says in the, uh, the book of the Old Testament, amen? Hallelujah, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Now, God, who is a spirit, amen, and God, who is that spirit, amen, and the spirit of God is that when he's renewing you, watch this, he is completing a process toward your human flourishing, that God wants you to flourish as a human being. He does. He wants you to flourish as a human being. Saints of God, he wants us, hallelujah, every believer, hallelujah, of the human race, he wants you to flourish, in fact, he loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son, that we should not perish but have everlasting life, that God sent not his son in this world to condemn you, but that through him you might be saved, amen. So God wants you to flourish, not in, and not in the natural sense, hallelujah, uh, not in your, in your flesh, but in the spirit of God living within you. And I believe that it is through the gift of renewal that you're going to go, watch this, to a higher level through the stages of sanctification by God's power, where he's divinely renewing you from the inside out. And remember this, beloved, this is the principle that we teach here, hallelujah, is that we live life on levels and we arrive in stages. We live life on levels and we arrive in stages. So now my first observation for today is grace, God's unmerited favor, grace, God's undeserved love, grace, God's unearned love and favor operating in your life. God's grace, hallelujah, is God's renewable energy. I'm here to tell you today that God's grace, his unmerited favor in your life, his undeserved love in your life, hallelujah, his, 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 his wanting to do so much in your life, hallelujah, it's, it, it is his renewable energy operating in your life, hallelujah. Now go with me to the book of Genesis chapter eight, verses 21 through 22 in the New King James Version of God's word. And here you'll find these words printed. And the Lord smelled a smoothing, a, not a smoothing, a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race. Even though everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. This is what God is saying to Noah and his family. See, beloved, after the flood, after the human disruption of the human history by the flood, God speaks to Noah about a new beginning or a fresh start. God is declaring that through the flood, he was doing a new thing. Hallelujah. It may not have seemed like he was, it seemed like that's what he was doing. Hallelujah. It may have seemed that, that God was just wiping out everything, but yes, he was, but he was making way for a new thing. He was making way for a fresh start. And that's the way it is in all of our lives, saints of God. But that when God, hallelujah, like we said last week, when he takes out the old, that he may establish the new. Saints of God, when God does away with the new, with the old and declare that it has expired, that it is of no use, and he removes that, hallelujah, that he can establish the new. What does God say? I am doing a new thing. 
And so what God was declaring to Noah, hallelujah, and his family, he was saying, through the flood, I'm up to something. Glory be to God. Tell your neighbor it's a setup, hallelujah, for you come back. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God knows, hallelujah, that the flood caused a disruption. Hallelujah. But the aftermath of the disruption includes God's grace of renewal. Can you imagine what Noah must have been thinking and feeling in the aftermath of the flood's disruption and devastation? Can you think that, that life as you knew it is no longer what is no longer. Hallelujah. That everything about life, hallelujah, doesn't exist anymore. Can you imagine how he felt that everything was void and everything was new? Saints of God. And then God speaks to him after he sent the doves out and, and the dove didn't come back. And so now he, he disembarks from the ark. He and his family, eight of them, step out of the ark and here God gives him the assurance of his faithfulness. Can you imagine how that feels? I'm sure you can because you've been through it, amen? We all have, who are living today have lived through a pandemic globally, glory to God. For three years, our lives were disrupted. Everything we knew was disrupted and devastation. And some of us felt it real close to home because loved ones died. People that we love, people that were in our lives, people that had a role and a purpose in our lives, they're no longer there in Jesus' name. And so saints of God, there is disruption, but here comes God. Hallelujah. And God is faithful, amen, that even while they were going through the flood, I believe God had his eye on Noah and his family. Even while we were going through what we were going through, God had his eye on us, amen. Even while, you have, even while you're going through what you're going through right now, God has his eye on you. And God wants me to tell you today, hallelujah, to assure you of his faithfulness. So after disembarking from the ark, Standing now on dry ground that was once all water covered, God was promising, watch this, order and change. In the grace of renewal, God was declaring newness, change, transition, transformation. These are all gifts of the grace of renewal. See, God was using the flood to reposition Noah for his next. Glory be to God and his family. And that's what God will do. In the grace of renewal, God will use what you're going through to reposition you for where you're going next. Amen. God will move everything around in your life, in your environment, in your surrounding, so he can get you in position for where he wants you to be in Jesus' name. Do I have a witness on the other side? Hallelujah of that screen. Is there somebody right now, hallelujah, that can declare that I've been through that, Pastor Tim? I've been through the re repositioning. I've been through the floods. I, I've been through the disruptions. Glory to God. And God, hallelujah, changed things around so he can get me to where I am today in Jesus' name. See, in the grace of renewal, change can be useful. I'm going to say it again. In the grace of renewal, change can be useful. And what you have to learn is and ask yourself, and what I want to ask you is what are you doing with your change? What are you doing with the transition? What are you doing with the transformation? What are you doing since we began this sermon series from April 1, hallelujah, to today? What are you doing? What are you doing to the 30th day of this month? What are you doing with the new thing that God is doing in your life? See, beloved, we should not be fearing the new thing or change. What we should be afraid of is if, is, is, uh, is if it doesn't change. Hallelujah. What you should be afraid of if you don't change. See, a world without change, a life without change is a hopeless existence. It's a frightening reality and it's a dull and dying perspective. Saints of God, I'm here to tell you, you ought to thank God today for change. You ought to thank God today for renewal. You ought to thank God today for transitions. You ought to thank God today, hallelujah, that God can use all of that to get you where he wants you to be, amen? And so saints of God, hallelujah, you don't want to stay the same. You want to grow because to not to grow is abnormal. Saints of God, to not to change. Huh? Transformation, metamorpho, where we transform into something else, into what we were not before. And that's what God is constantly doing in you. The Bible teaches us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, hallelujah, it teaches us, I think about verse 18, where God is inwardly, as you behold the word of God, that the Holy Spirit goes to work 
Hallelujah. Transforming you into the image you behold. So therefore, we lift up the principle, what you behold, you become. Amen. What you pay attention to, what you give your heart to, what you give your attention to, you will become saints of God because the Holy Spirit will make it so in Jesus name. So in the gift of renewal, we are conditioned to expect, embrace and experience the new. God wants to provide you today with the grace of renewal. If it is too hot, listen to the scripture. He says, he says, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be the seed time and harvest. There's going to be winter and summer. There's going to be cold and hot. See what God is saying here. He says, if it's too hot, keep living. Cold is coming. Glory to God. If it's winter, hallelujah. If winter is lasting too long, don't worry. Summer is coming. If you don't like your harvest, watch this. I love this about this, this principle that God lifts up in the book of Genesis chapter eight, the eight for new beginning. God says to me, hallelujah, the revelation, he says, if you don't like your harvest, don't fret. Just change the seeds you're sowing and you'll get a different harvest. If you don't want apple anymore, apples anymore, hallelujah, don't plant them anymore. Plant orange seeds, whatever you want, so you can change your harvest by changing your seed in Jesus' name. So what is God saying? He is the God of renewal and that what you're going through right now will not last always, that God can bring about change in your life. Amen. If it's too hot, Hallelujah, cold is coming. If it's uh, if it's the winter's lasting too long, don't worry. Summer's right behind in Jesus' name. So we serve a God of renewal who gives us the grace of renewal in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. See, renewal brings about correction. And it does. That when God is renewing you, hallelujah, through the grace of renewal, and he's bringing change in life, do you know what God can do? God will correct some things. Hallelujah that need to be corrected. See, change can bring that about. Renewal takes place, watch this, in the process of change. Renewal comes after a crisis. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes the crisis for you to experience the renewal of God. And then saints of God, dare I say this? Yes, I will. You can say that despite the flood, or whatever disruption has occurred in your life, do I got a witness, hallelujah, that despite the flood, despite what has occurred in my life, glory to be to God, hallelujah, after all I've been through, hallelujah, God is good. Do I have a witness? How? Who can testify to that today, amen? After all you've lived through, that God is good. After all the disruption that you've experienced in your life, God is good. Through it all, hallelujah, you've learned to trust in Jesus, through it all, you've learned to take him and his word. Amen. Glory be to God, which brings me to observation number two, which is our last observation for the day. So again, observation number one is grace. God's grace is the grace of renewal. Amen. It is God renewing you. Amen. It is God giving you, hallelujah, introducing this principle in your life, the seed time and harvest principle. Glory be to God. <clears throat> And then the second observation is this. The grace of renewal on display. The grace of renewal on display. Go with me to Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 40, verses 30 through 31. And the word of the Lord says, why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or whine Israel, saying God has lost track of me? He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's the creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. Amen. And he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts for even young people. Hallelujah, tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Selah, glory be to God. Now, beloved, I need you to understand that God does everything according to a pattern based on a principle with purpose. God does everything according to a pattern 
based on a principle with purpose. In this text, we see the grace of renewal in full operation, confirming the heart of God as he is committed to renewing you when you get tired, hallelujah, to renewing you when you become exalt, exhausted, to renewing you, glory be to God, that when you get fatigued, to renewing you, saints of God, when you feel like dropping out and quitting, that God is committed to the grace of renewal in your life, hallelujah, through his supernatural energy that never runs out. Like rivers flowing, hallelujah, hallelujah, like rivers of flowing water, hallelujah, within you so you'll never thirst again. God is renewing you from the inside out, amen? It's not, glory be to God, where you vacate at, hallelujah. It's not where you live at that's going to bring the renewal, amen? Saints of God, what's going to bring lasting and long-lasting renewal in your life is going to be what's inside of you. Hallelujah. It's going to be what you're working with, what you're made of, who you're connected to, who are you looking to, who are you leaning upon, who are you dependent upon to bring about the renewal. See, saints of God, when I looked at this verse and this text in the book of Isaiah, hallelujah, how else can you explain running and not getting tired? run and not get tired. Hallelujah. When I ride my bike, I'm tired after a 20 mile ride. Hallelujah. I'm tired. But God says you can run and not get tired. Now he's not talking about the physical tiredness, but he's talking about the mental tiredness. He's talking about the mental weight and the mental heaviness of trying to, to do the things that God would have you to do, of doing the things that God would have you to do and living right and teaching right and preaching right and, and, and treating people right, amen, and working right in your job and working right in, in your family and leading your family and being an active product, uh, uh, produ participant in your family structure, amen, that that can be anything righteous, saints of God, can be mentally fatigued, hallelujah, to you. But God says you can run and not get tired. You can walk and not lag behind. How else can you explain that unless it be, hallelujah, some inward supernatural power of God working inside of you to what? To renew you. How can you keep it new? How can you keep it fresh? How can you say, okay, yes, I'm going to let go of what was. I'm going to let go of what happened. I'm going to step into what is. Hallelujah. <clears throat> How can you maintain that? Unless you understand that God is inwardly working in you. Hallelujah, that just when you are tired and ready to drop out, you get fresh strength from God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he renews your strength no matter what your age. Hallelujah, no matter what your status, no matter what your station in life is, God is able. I must do this right now. I'm going to decree in your life. Hallelujah, that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you shall spread your wings and soar like eagles to heights that you've never been before and greater distances, hallelujah, that you've never gone before. Hallelujah, glory be to God. I'm declaring it right now that through the supernatural power of God, the renewing power of God, that renewable energy of God, that never, hallelujah, gets tired. I love what the writer said. He said, God never has to pause and catch his breath. Hallelujah. There's times where you got to pull over to the side. Come on, be honest. Where you got to pause and pull over and catch your breath. God never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never grows weary. He never grows tired. He never has to pull over. Hallelujah. And catch his breath. Why? Because God is faithful. God lasts and what he has to give to you, hallelujah, is renewable energy in Jesus' name. Now, renewable energy, you've heard it before. It's energy produced from sources like the sun and wind that are naturally replenished and do not run out. Renewable energy is energy derived from natural sources that are replenished at a higher rate than they are consumed. And then finally, renewable energy often referred to as clean energy, comes from natural sources or processes that are constantly replenished. So God is like that. The Holy Spirit is like that. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not natural, but he's supernatural. It comes from a supernatural source. Hallelujah. It comes from heaven's storehouse. Hallelujah. It comes from the Holy Spirit living within you. Glory be to God. The supernatural presence of God. 
hallelujah, invading your heart, invading your life, dwelling inside of you. Hallelujah. He is a presence. He is a force. He is a power. He is strength. Glory be to God. That hallelujah, that constantly replenishes itself. Hallelujah. So that you will never, ever grow weary and never, ever wear out in Jesus name. Though outwardly you perish. Come on. I hear you. Yeah, hallelujah. I hear what you're saying. Tim, you don't know. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. For the Bible says in the book of second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16, I think it says, it says that outwardly, hallelujah, we're perishing every day, but inwardly, watch what's happening. We're being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. The outward man is dying. The outward man is getting tired, but inwardly, the Bible says you're being renewed day by day. How can that be? The only way it can be is that you got a supernatural reservoir of Holy Spirit power, a renewable energy inside of you that has a constant replenishing mechanism. Hallelujah. Inside of you. Glory be to God. Feeding you over and over again. Well, believer, hallelujah. I want to tell you, you possess God's grace of renewal. God doesn't come and go. God lasts. Hallelujah. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out, doesn't pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything about you and everything that it's going to take to keep it fresh inside and out. He knows what it's going to take to keep your marriage fresh. He knows what it's going to take to keep your ministry fresh. He knows what it's going to take to keep your work fresh. He knows what it's going to take to keep your parenting and your relationships fresh. He knows what it's going to take to keep your finances fresh. Hallelujah. Your mental and emotional state of mind fresh. He knows what it's going to take. Why? Because he knows you inside and out. He knows every hair on your head. Hallelujah. That's numbered or not there. Glory be to God. He knows you Hallelujah. Intimately. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he knows what's required to keep it fresh. So he's going to renew you today. Today, someone right now, all of you hearing this word today. Hallelujah. God is releasing inside of you. Hallelujah. Wells of living water. Glory be to God. This flowing up inside of you. Glory be to God. That you'll never thirst again. Glory be to God. I'm talking to anybody thirsty today in Jesus' name. You'll never thirst again. Why? Because you got the inward power of the renewal power of God. The grace of renewal operating inside of you. You will not drop out. You're going to finish. Amen. You're going to finish high school. You're going to finish college. You're going to finish that degree. You're going to finish that promotion. You're going to finish that assignment. You're going to finish that book. You're going to finish that play. Whatever it is that God has assigned to your hands to do, whatever ministry God has assigned to your hand to do, you're going to finish it. You're going to complete it. Why? Because God, hallelujah, through the grace of renewal is going to give you supernatural power to finish it in Jesus' name. You will not be blocked. You will not be stopped. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, you will not drop out. Glory be to God. Even young people, the Bible says, get tired and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall. But those who watch this wait upon God get fresh strength. Glory be to God. So that begs the question, what is waiting upon God? What does that mean? Hallelujah. God's renewable energy, hallelujah, is available to you if you know how to wait on him. Hallelujah. If you know how to put your trust in him. See, waiting on God is trusting in God. Waiting on God is serving God. Waiting on God is patiently believing that God knows just where you are. Waiting on God is paying attention to God with an expectation that shall not be cut off. Waiting on God, hallelujah, is turning away from the world's way of doing things, and turning away from what the world says. But waiting on God is looking to God, hallelujah, and declaring that God, I trust you. God, I believe you. God, I'm waiting on you. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. And I'm here to tell you that when you turn your attention with expectation towards God, with a waiting attitude, with with an expecting attitude, with a servant attitude, with a giving spirit and a servanthood spirit. Saints of God, God will show up in your life and manifest his glory in your life. He will renew you from with strength on the inside. See, waiting on the Lord is not idly doing nothing. Saints of God, waiting on God is not sitting on your hands. Hallelujah. Unless he tells you to sit, unless he tells you to be still. Hallelujah. Because he can do that. See, glory be to God. He can say, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. And I will be exalted. See, but waiting on God is trusting God. 
Waiting on God is listening to God. Waiting on God is moving and doing the things that God tells you to do. Doing the things that the Holy Spirit prompts you to do. It's doing works of faith and not works of flesh. See, waiting on God is with patience and expectation. So you're trusting God, hallelujah, and in the process of God. You're hoping with a confident expectation as you expend the energy of servanthood and faithfulness. When you wait on God, glory be to God, God says you shall renew your strength. Hallelujah. God says when you wait on him, he's going to renew your strength. He's going to give you power from on high in Jesus name. So I release unto you today and decree into your life today. Hallelujah. Let it be new. Let go of what was. Let go of what happened. Step into what is and keep it fresh. How, Pastor Tim? Keep it fresh by waiting on God. Keep it fresh by allowing God's Hallelujah, grace of renewal to be fully operational in your life. Hallelujah, I hear the Lord saying what God said in the book of James. He said, when you fall into divers temptations, when you get into all kind of troubles, he says, glory be to God. He says, don't panic, glory be to God. He says, don't, 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 don't panic. Don't lose your mind, don't lose your head. But he says, he says, watch this. He says, wait on God. He says, put patience to work for you. Hallelujah, because watch this, when you let patience have its perfect work, you will come out wanting or lacking nothing. I want to submit to you today that God, hallelujah, through his grace, the grace of renewal is teaching you and equipping you to keep it fresh. Let's pray the prayer of renewal today. Father, glory to God, when we feel like, hallelujah, we have nothing left, Hallelujah, to give. Father, when we feel like we can't go another mile. Father, when we feel we can't give another inch. Lord, take our weariness and emptiness and fill us with your strength. Renew our strength within us, Father. And as the deer pants for the water, so does our souls long for you, God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that the grace of renewal is filling us up right now. We receive it in Jesus' name. It is so, and so it is. Hallelujah. Well, beloved saints of God, I want you to know today, if you're listening to me and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, God doesn't like that. God wants you to have a personal relationship with him. God doesn't want you to have religion. God wants you connected to him. Hallelujah. God wants you connected to your life's giving source. He wants you connected to the source of all life. Hallelujah. And we here at New Beginnings Community Church, we believe in the power of connection to transform lives, to change the world. So I pray today in Jesus name that you'll believe the scripture that says that God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, will never perish, but have everlasting life. That life is the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life. Well, glory be to God, though your outward man perish, your inward man will be renewed and you'll have everlasting life. If you want that life today, if you want to turn over your reins and what you've been doing and try God, I submit to you today, reach out to us and we'll reach back out to you because we want you to know, hallelujah, that we believe in the power of connection to transform lives, to change the world. We want to connect you to Christ, connect you to his church, and connect you to the Great Commission. Hallelujah. And so we got that information on the screen. Take a picture of it right there. Hallelujah. And it provides the information on how you can. It's in the chat as well, how you can get connected. And we will reach back out to you to help you, beloved, to help you, new believer, to walk in after the teachings and instructions of Jesus Christ. It's called discipleship. And we want to connect you. And listen, then every believer needs to, uh, needs a pastor. And I would love to pastor. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, what their distance is. We are worldwide. We want to disciple you in Jesus' name worldwide. And we have the tools to do it in Jesus' name. So reach out to us and we'll reach back out to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now, I want to give you an opportunity to give. This is the time where we give and we sow into 
the ministry of New Beginnings Community Church so we can continue to do worldwide ministry, amen, locally and abroad. So I wanna thank God for all of you that have given and for those who will give right now because you feel the unction of the Holy Spirit, not under compulsion, but you just feel the need and desire, hallelujah, to sow, to contribute, to help us continue to do what we're doing all around the world. I've shared with you before that we're blessing ministries all around the world, literally, hallelujah, through what you do as you partner with us. So I thank God for you, hallelujah, that tithe and give offerings and that are partners with Tim Williams Ministries and partners with New Beginnings Community Church. I thank God for you. You can text to give or you can mail your gifts in in Jesus name. And then you can call and leave us some information about how this message has added value to your life in Jesus name. So we thank God for you. We thank God for your grace to give, that God has graced you to give. And we thank God for your giving in Jesus name. We pray that God will continue to grace you to give, hallelujah, and to live the abundant life that God wants for you. Amen. Now listen, this is the last Sunday of the month of April. So next Sunday is the first Sunday. It's our Assembly Sunday. Hallelujah. Next Sunday in the uh, state of Michigan. So if you're in the metropolitan Detroit area, glory be to God, and you're around Warren, Michigan, come on out for our Assembly Sunday where we meet at the Macomb Community College, uh, South Campus, amen, on 12 Mile and Hayes. And we meet in Building K. Meet us there at 945, amen, for morning worship, morning glory, amen. We're going to have a new word that the Lord has given us. Amen. So that's next Sunday, May 7th, 2023. Meet us at 945 at that location. And then also, amen, uh, we got a service opportunity coming up. If you're in the living in the Detroit metropolitan area on Saturday, May 13th, we have a service opportunity because we're still that kind of people. We are the church of the living God. Amen. And we believe in loving our community and giving back. So we're partnering and teaming up with our Community Development Corporation so that we can go into the community and do some cleaning up as we partner with the city of Detroit. Hallelujah to do the Motor City cleanup. Amen. In Jesus' name. So uh, service, in-person service. Amen. Next Sunday, uh, where we have communion and live worship. Amen. And then we'll still be online at 11 o'clock. And then we have a service opportunity in the state of Michigan, May 13th, 2023. And then we begin a new sermon series entitled Anchored. Amen. So join us. Tune in next week. Hallelujah. As we continue to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we conclude today, we want to challenge you to let it be new in Jesus name. It is so. And so it is. Hallelujah. Keep it fresh. God bless you.